These are the notes for Physical Science, Chapter 10, Matter and Temperature. I have my name up at the top. You'll replace that with your own. The date that I originally took these notes, please go ahead and put the date that you're writing them, so January whatever. Sixth grade, whatever class section you're in, and your homeroom teacher. So I'm the homeroom teacher for 6D this quarter. Last time I was 8D. Um, so I put 8D Riggle because that was my homeroom. If your homeroom is 6D Riggle, 6C Merritt, 6B Arker, or 6A Griffin, put that in your notes. These notes cover section 10.1, the nature of matter. First are vocabulary terms. Brownian motion. Brownian motion describes how particles move in jerky, irregular patterns. So jerky, that's where, let's see, my pen right here, right now it's kind of, actually I guess my camera's not picking it up very fast, so it looks kind of jerky. But if it just kind of flows, like flowing, 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 that's a kind of flowing pattern. But if it goes, it eh, stops, jumps over there, stops, jumps over here, stops. That is a jerky pattern. And irregular means it doesn't necessarily follow a plan. It just kind of goes where it wants to. Number two, element. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by physical or chemical means. So an element is as good as it gets. You cannot break down an element into a smaller of the same element. Um, if you break it down into something else, then it would completely change. It would not be that element anymore. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the chemical identity of that element. So an atom is the very smallest piece of an element. You cannot break it down beyond that and still keep it as an element. Compound. A compound is a substance that contains two or more different elements chemically joined and has the same composition throughout. A molecule is a group of two or more atoms joined together by chemical bonds. Pure substance is a matter that cannot be separated into other types of matter by physical means. This includes all elements and compounds. So examples, water and quartz are compounds and an element example might be oxygen. So I'm gonna add that in there. I don't know why I didn't do that before. A mixture is matter that contains a combination of different elements and or compounds and can be separated by physical means. So that would be something like a salad. So like your lettuce, tomatoes, onions, croutons, salad dressing, whatever you put in your salad. Um, it could be granite, so that's a rock. Like those little teeny tiny rocks out in our front yards. This is also a granite. It's a rock and it has a lot of different types of minerals inside of it. And you can clearly see that they are all there. Homogeneous mixture. It could also be called homogeneous mixture. A mixture that is the same throughout. All samples of a homogeneous mixture are the same. So an example might be a very well mixed hot cocoa. Kool-Aid, after you've added the water and possibly the sugar, depending on which type you buy, if you buy the one with sugar or not, um, and all mixed up and ready to drink. Um, something else might be very well mixed air in a box. 
that could be considered a homogeneous mixture. Um, as a solid, a homogeneous mixture might be like a metal alloy. So two metals that are mixed together to make a stronger metal, something like steel. Steel uses iron and carbon and a few other elements all mixed in there together to make steel. And as long as that steel looks exactly the same in every part, if I were to take a little piece of steel from the left side and a little bit from the right side and it's still exactly the same stuff, then it is a homogeneous mixture. Number nine, a heterogeneous mixture. That's a mixture in which different samples are not necessarily made up of the same proportions of matter. So an example of this would be cereal in milk. That one you can just look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that is so totally different. Cereal, think of like some Frosted Flakes or Cheerios or something like that. Imagine them floating around in some milk. The milk is a liquid. The cereal is a solid. You have a solid inside of liquids. You can clearly see the Frosted Flakes in the milk. That is totally a heterogeneous mixture. So the nature of matter. What is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Mass, that means you can put it on a scale or a balance and you can measure how much it weighs. You can measure how much its mass is. Takes up space, that means it, like my pen, it's taking up space. I can put it on a scale and I can figure out how much it weighs. Um, let's see, a balloon, if you fill it with air, with gas, that balloon gets bigger. So I got my balloon, that's a balloon, I swear. So my balloon, if I fill it with more air, it gets bigger. The air inside takes space. So air is matter because it takes up space. And I can stick this balloon on a scale and I can weigh it before and after adding air and the weight will change. All matter is made up of atoms. So what is the evidence, the early evidence that atoms exist? Way, way back when, in 430 BCE, so that means 2,451 years ago, two dudes in Greece, Democritus and Leucippus, proposed or suggested the idea of atoms in ancient Greece. So they decided, hmm, what makes everything? And they figured it might be like something really, really tiny that they couldn't see and we could only imagine at that time. And then in about 1803 of the current era, so only 228 years ago, a guy named John Dalton brought back the idea, but he didn't have any proof. So he thought, well, maybe atoms are a thing. Maybe they do make up matter, but... I don't know how to actually prove it. So in 1827, Robert Brown, he observed random jerky movements of pollen in water and tiny dust particles. So he noticed that dust particles will kind of do nick, 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 like do those crazy random jerky movements and also pollen floating in water will just kind of like shake around, like shake it, shake it, shake it. So he theorized that all tiny particles move the same way. And that is what he calls Brownian motion, that definition we had at the beginning. In 1905, Albert Einstein proposed Brownian motion is caused by collisions or crashing between visible particles, such as pollen, and smaller invisible particles. This is used as evidence that matter is made of atoms. So Albert Einstein figured out that 
The pollen, that would be something big. That's the yellow stuff that comes out of flowers that makes people sneeze if they are allergic. Um, he was thinking that maybe stuff like pollen, the reason it shows brownie in motion where it jerks around and moves all crazy is because there's little teeny tiny particles that are also moving around and crashing into that pollen and making that pollen move. So those little teeny tiny invisible particles would be atoms. Since 1905, we have definitely made some more progress toward figuring out what atoms are made of. Um, you have like your protons and neutrons and electrons, and then there's even stuff like hadrons and quarks and other little bits that we're still learning about and furthering our knowledge of atoms today. Um, but we just need to know what is the early evidence. That's all you need to know in sixth grade. So atoms, elements, molecules, compounds, and mixtures. An atom is one particle of an element. An element is a pure substance with specific properties that cannot be mechanically broken down. So I can't go to an element. I can't go up to gold and say, I have a knife, I cut you in half. That's not going to do anything. It's just going to make two pieces of gold. Um, I can't send gold through a filter and get filtered gold. If that gold was floating in water or something else, then yeah, I could filter out the gold. But I can't take the element gold and break it down into something smaller just by using mechanical or physical means. So I can't filter it. I can't just let it separate itself. It already is itself. A molecule is two or more atoms joined by chemical bonds. They can be made of one element or of many elements. So a molecule could be something like two oxygen atoms that are joined together chemically. So by maybe sharing or exchanging electrons and they form a molecule of two oxygen atoms that are joined together. Or it can be a compound which would be maybe an oxygen and two hydrogens. So we would have two different types of atoms or elements joined together to form a molecule, which is a compound in that case. So atoms, elements, molecules, and compounds continued. Compound is, contains two or more different elements joined chemically and has the same composition throughout. My Wriggle Pro tip here is elements are made of atoms, molecules are made of atoms, but compounds are made of molecules. That also means that compounds are made of atoms because compounds are made of molecules, molecules are made of atoms. I'm just saying right here that compounds are made of molecules because compounds have at least two different types of atoms, so they have to be a molecule. This drawing right here represents one single element, so each of these little red circles would be one atom. In a compound, you would have two different types of atoms at least. You could have three, four, as many atoms as you can combine together. So this right here is one big atom, and these are two little ones. This might be something like oxygen here in the middle and two hydrogens. This would be water molecule. So two hydrogens bonded chemically against an oxygen, and they're arranging their electrons in such a way that they are nice and strong in a compound there. And so a compound would just be all of your molecules would be the same thing. So this has a big pink and two little reds, big pink, two little red, big pink, two little reds. A mixture would be uh, maybe two different types of compounds, two different types of elements, a compound and an element, or any combination. It can be just two things. It could be three, four, five, infinite possibilities. So how can we classify different types of matter?
A pure substance cannot be separated with filters, sorting, boiling, heating, or cooling. Elements and compounds are pure substances. A mixture can be separated into different types of matter by physical or mechanical means, such as filters, sorting, boiling, heating, or cooling. So a mixture, if you had, say, oh, sorry. Let me try that part again. So a mixture can be separated into different types of matter by physical or mechanical means, such as filters, sorting, boiling, heating, or cooling. So let's say you have salt dissolved in water. If you boil that salt water, the water will boil away and the salt will turn back into a solid. So you can separate them by physical means of boiling, which makes it a mixture. If you had a salad, you could sort everything out. So you could move the lettuce over here, the onions up there, the cabbage over here, whatever you have in your salad. You can pick out each little piece, go pick each little piece out and move it somewhere else. You can sort. A filter, if you made mud, that's just dirt and water. If you have a super good filter, you could send the mud through that filter and it will only let the water through and it will keep the dirt behind. Um, heating and cooling, that might make things boil or melt. Cooling might make things turn solid or turn into a liquid from a gas. So changing of states with the boiling, heating, and cooling can sometimes help things to separate because everything has its own boiling point, melting point, freezing point. All those numbers are special to every item. So if you have like two liquids mixed together, then you can heat them up and one might boil faster than the other and they could separate that way because you could boil one away and then just leave behind the other one. So an example of a mixture might be my Coke Zero that I am apparently obsessed with. It has carbonated water, that is carbon dioxide, caramel color, phosphoric acid, that's a compound, aspartame, that's a compound, potassium benzoate, compound, natural flavors, who knows what natural flavors are, I sure don't. Potassium citrate, that's a compound. Asulfamy potassium, that's a compound. Caffeine, that's a compound. So there's all sorts of compounds all mixed up into my soda, and that is a mixture because they're just mixed. When we're naming our different types of mixtures, we can call them homogeneous or heterogeneous. And you guys probably did not learn this in biology, but in various parts of science, when you see the word homo, it will mean the same, and hetero means different. So homogeneous would be everything is the same about it. Heterogeneous would mean everything is different about it. What are homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures? Homogeneous is the same throughout. All samples will be the same. So I'm thinking of well-mixed hot cocoa. Coffee, where it's either straight black coffee or you've added enough sugar and cream and everything and mixed it up so good that it's just one consistent color all the way through. Metal alloys like brass. Brass is a mixture of about 70% copper and about 30% zinc. So it takes a kind of red and a kind of silvery thing, they blend together and make this kind of yellowy, coppery, reddish, orangey, yellow color metal. Um, but it's not a chemical bond. It's literally just a mixture of the two, and you could easily separate them through physical means. A smoothie, so maybe like a banana and some ice cream or frozen yogurt and some other fruits in there, all blended up so perfectly well. They're nice and smooth, hence smoothie. Um, there's no chunks in that smoothie. It's all one color all the way through. That would be a homogeneous mixture.
salt dissolved in water. Salt is one compound, water is another compound. Mix them together, they're not going to chemically bond. They're dissolving actually breaks up the bond. Um, so mix them together and that would become a mixture. And because that salt would be evenly distributed, it would be all over in that water, it would be homogeneous or homogeneous. <clears throat> and heterogeneous or heterogeneous. Different samples will have different components. So granite, again, that's the type of rock that we have all over the place in our driveways. Um, and it has all sorts of different colored rocks in it. <clears throat> I mean, you can look at it and you can see there's three, at least two or three different types of rocks in there. It is a mixture. Chicken noodle soup. It has broth. That's a liquid. It has noodles, chicken, and veggies. Those are three solids. Um, the noodles are definitely different from the chicken, and both of those are different from the vegetables. So chicken noodle soup, you can see three different things, four different things, and it's completely different. That's all I have to say about these notes. Write your own summary. So take what I told you about, what you wrote, and then write two or three sentences summarizing the main idea of these notes. For the grading scale, if you copy every single word that I wrote, you can get up to 60 points. If you copy all the questions, the vocabulary, and everything else, you'll get up to 20 points. And if you write your summary, you can get up to 20 points. Sorry, last time I made this out of 10 points. These are out of 100% now. So 100% is an A, 90 is also an A, 80% is a B, 70% is a C, 60 is a D, 50% or lower is an F. If you only take the notes without questions and without a summary, it is only worth a D. If you only do the vocabulary, it is an F. In order to get a C or better, you need to take the whole entire set of notes. You need to include questions. You need to include a summary. And that is it.